Hey everybody, Double B here, aka Russell Gamer, back with another installment of WGS TV, right here on the WGS YouTube channel. Before I get, before we get the SmackDown results and my reactions to it underway, I like. First off, I'd like to say that we've finally reached 250 subscribers. That was that's always been my second goal here on YouTube is to net. 250. Right now, I believe it's currently at 254. So I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you out there for following me here on YouTube, and for especially like guys like MC Devo 22. There's uh, the Cornbread 86, the, um, 21 Jordan fan, Wrestling Ransom reviews. Check his channel out too, guys. He's good. Uh, Big Mike with uh, Wrestling Rants Reviews. Check him out as well. And every single one of you. I know I can't get to all of you out there for uh, subbing to my YouTube channel. But in general, a, a big thank you. As uh, I attempt to rise in popularity here on WGS YouTube channel. And also, um, a thing I've been promising everybody, especially on my Facebook page is if I can reach 250 subscribers, I will post up more Gulf Coast Wrestling videos. And so you know what? what I'm going to have one tomorrow. Right, or bright and early in the morning, I will have a new, another GCW match up right here on the WGS YouTube channel. So be sure you look forward to that. Now, let's go to Friday Night Smackdown here. Um, had Randy Orton coming out. To tell him, pretty much talk about his win, he had it over the limit. Then Christian came out to ooh, try to get another rematch. Then Mark Henry came out, and then Sheamus came out. Basically, it, it got pretty predictable. You know, as soon as Christian, Mark Henry, and Sheamus came out, I already knew it was going to happen, and I didn't have to read a spoiler or anything like that. I could just tell that they were going to go for a triple threat number one contenders match, and I did. All right now the match, the first match he had it was a uh, Sin Cara and Chavo Guerrero. Very nice match. Very nice match between these two. Um, if I am not if I am not mistaken, I believe that Sin Cara they, they they did a translation, and I believe it. If I remember correctly, I think they said Sin Cara means faceless. Faceless, I think it's either faceless or no face, but somewhere in that general area of no f of uh, having no face. It was still a really great match. Now, Sin Cara has at least been known for botches and uh, and the amount of botches he's had in his matches, but he did not have any. In fact, he actually he was very very good. There was a wonderful finish. It was almost he has a new finisher. It was almost like it was a. Um, a corkscrew head scissors, and then he turned it into a bulldog. I don't know how, but he turned it into a bulldog. Now, one person on Blog TV kind of pointed out, it kind of looked like he was going for an arm bar. He might have. He might have been going for an arm bar, but maybe, you know, when they called for that spot, they probably realized that they were too close to the, to the ring aprons and the ring ropes. So I believe they probably just told him to turn around and get pinned, so... Then we had uh, Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes still r rocking the uh, the whole bag gimmick here. Um, one thing I want to ask you guys real quickly, if you want to answer in the comments in the comment section below, um, do you believe that this is a better gimmick for Cody Rhodes than the dashing one? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, very interesting match here. Um, really exciting for Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes, to be honest with you guys. Um, at one point, I thought it was over. I thought, you know, with the big push that Cody Rhodes, the big push that Cody Rhodes has been having, you know, I thought they would have given him the win. But no, it, it turns to be just the opposite. Daniel Bryan locked in the bell lock and got the submission victory on Cody Rhodes, and then Cody Rhodes to pretty much extenuate the match. Uh, attacked Daniel Bryan, gave him the uh, crossroads, and put the bag on his face. Um, I'm rather shocked they didn't have Ted DiBiase come out with him. I thought they were pairing the two back together in front of them for them to do more stuff on the gimmick, but they're not doing that. 
Well, they, well, they may or may not be doing that, but I know for certain that he wasn't uh, there that night. Or tonight, rather. Anyway, we had Ezekiel Jackson and Heath Slater. It was almost a done deal just from the get-go. You know, you can only tell. When Heath Slater was going to get in trouble, what happened? The court came out. Come on. Come on, WWE writing staff. Come on, be less predictable. I mean, you were it was so blatantly obvious you were going for a triple threat number one contender match with Christian, Mark Henry, and Sheamus, and now Ezekiel Jackson, one member of the core, and the rest of the core wasn't at ringside? Gee, I mean, only a person with an IQ of zero would have figured out that the rest of the core was going to come run down and, and try to interfere. Then we had the Monsters Brawl match. Now, I kind of figured they kind of took the name from TNA. You know, I'm not talking about the match gimmick. I'm talking just solely based on the name. The Monsters Ball. They called uh, tonight's match for Kane and Great Khali the Monsters Brawl. Now, you know what? I know they've been working for quite some time to do the Great Khali's heel turn, especially with the work he's been doing with Jinder Mahal. So, um... They had the match. We had back and forth between these two. Kane surprisingly got the win. But now, but now when I look at it, I think it was a good thing that they made him lose. I believe the only way that would have been the, the best way for him to turn him heel is to have him frustrated. Then we had Jinder Mahal probably say something in Indian. I'm not even sure what he said. And then uh, he slapped Kali, uh, Rajan Singh. Um, Rajan Singh gets mad about it. And next thing you know, he steps right in front of Great Khali. Then again, predictability. Predictability. Great Khali slaps on the Khali vice grip. And then next thing you know, heel turn. Great Khali is a heel again. Um, I believe this will be the first time Great Khali has been heel since... About 2008. 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, we had Michael Cole, I'm sorry, Booker T call out Michael Cole basically to do something I'm all in favor of, publicly humiliate him in front of the WWE audience. Yeah. And then next, I have absolutely no idea what this was about. AJ and Caitlin with Natalia as their manager, taking on Alicia Botch and Tamina. What was the point of this? Please tell me. What was the point? Because there was none whatsoever. Main event time, Seamus Christian and Mark Henry. Let me say this. I would have been really shocked if they would uh, give Christian a shot again. I don't have anything against him, but he's already had two back-to-back -back championship matches. Or three, if you think about it. Because he had to defend against... Well, no, two. Because he had to defend against Randy Orton and lost and tried to win it back and he didn't get it. Mark Henry, not time yet. Not time yet. So, they went with Sheamus, which is really surprising. They really haven't done anything big with Sheamus since he won the WWE title. And that was, what, like a couple of years ago? So, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really anticipating, you know, what they can pull out with Sheamus Randy Orton. Because this is the second feud they're going to be doing with the two. They, they did one, I think, in 2009 with these two over the WWE title, Randy Orton and Sheamus. And it was really good back then. I'm re really hoping for something good now. So that's pretty much been it. Um, if I want to say match of the night, it's a toss-up between Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes and Sin Cara and Chavo Guerrero, but i got to go with Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. I think that was the uh, best match of the night. You know, I'm not going to say Kane and Great Khali because that was a snore fest and the, the heel turn was anticipated. AJ and Caitlin and Alicia Botch and Tamina. Two divas from NXT Season 3 with a manager that just popped out of nowhere. And Alicia Botch and Tamina. Who might be a man. I'm not, I'm not sure. Sin Cara and Chava Guerrero. It's a toss-up. I mean, they were both... Both matches were equally as entertaining. It's really a flip of the coin. I'm not going to say too much about Sheamus, Christian, and Mark Henry. Um, one, the match wasn't that bad, but it was very predictable. Very predictable. So, 
I gotta go Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. I really thought that Cody Rhodes was gonna get the win. They turn it around. Daniel Bryan gets the win. You know what? I really hope they build a feud out of these two. I really would like to see how they handle a feud. Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. I really like to see where they would go. I mean, Daniel Bryan had a, pr a pretty, pretty good feud with The Miz. I mean, it wasn't great or anything like that, but he still had a pretty good one. S still a good one. So I'd like to see them... I'd really like to see him used more. Especially in an angle against Cody Rhodes. You know, Cody Rhodes is hot right now. I mean, he is, uh, he's being pushed like crazy. It's ever since uh, Rey Mysterio pushed him at WrestleMania. He's being pushed like nothing I've ever seen before. So, gotta go Daniel Bryan, Cody Rhodes, guys. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but leave your comments in the comment section below. What was your favorite moment of the night, match of the night, or anything you want to talk about? Leave it, your comments in the comment section below. Until then, I'm Double B, Billy Boudreaux, a.k.a. Russell Gamer. Thanks for watching.